This week on CrossFeed. The importance of religion in America. Will LeBron play basketball for Jesus? Afghanistan kills Christians. The Jesus Show on Comedy Central. Leaving Islam on a bus. Hello, everyone, and welcome to CrossFeed Religious News. I'm Pastor Dale Critchley, pastor of Shepherd of the Ridge Lutheran Church in North Ridgeville, Ohio. Hey, I'm Pastor Jim Butler out here in beautiful Dedham, Massachusetts, in the suburbs of Boston. And I'm Noah. I'm helping out with the vacation Bible school here this week. Hmm. So what are you doing for VBS? <laughs> We're doing Let's make- Build an Ark from Kramer Publishing. How is it? Is it a good, any good? Uh, you know, it's it's workable. It's a uh, um, it's 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 kind of a rough outline, and um, and the, it's not it's not super flashy and stuff. Everything comes on a on a uh, CD, and so you just print everything out. It's all PDFs and and stuff. Um, and uh, so it doesn't, you know, it's not on glossy paper unless you choose to print it out on glossy paper. But it's mm-hmm. full color and everything. Um, it's available in either King James or NIV. Uh, so you take your pick there. I thought that was cute. Um, and, uh, but it's, a, you know, it's, it's something that it's definitely not the kind of thing that you can just hand to, to a person and say, here, read this. Uh, the opening pretty much is, but I'm kind of reworking parts of that. And, um, but it's it's the sort of thing that that really encourages discussion and and things like that. So it's you know it's pretty good. I've seen better. I've seen worse. Okay, we're trying the CPH one this year, so we'll see how it goes. Not too happy with bees, but hey, you know what the heck? <laughs> uh, actually, we're do, we're we're taking part in tomorrow night's um the Dedham Flag Day Parade. We actually have a float in it tomorrow night, and so we're going to be advertising our VBS as part of our, our thing. Also, we already have uh, over 100 kids registered. Cool. We've only got room for like about another 20 kids at the most. Wow. See, we're, so. we're kind of down. We're, we're really down this year, actually. Uh, but I don't think we did a, as much advertising, and we really should have done more of that. And So hopefully next year we'll, we'll do more of that. You know, maybe we should... We have- Maybe we could put a sign on a bus. We haven't even done any advertising. <laughs> <laughs> We're just that well known. But anyway, yeah, maybe putting bus ads will do it for you. So uh, there's a few um, places across the country, Miami and uh, New York City, um, where there are new bus ads. And um says, um, leaving Islam, fatwa on your head. Is your family threatening you? Uh, and then refuge from Islam dot com. Um, so yeah, the opponents say this is an anti Muslim message and tries to draw people away from the faith, but the supporters say, well no, there's there's people out there and they've become Christian and they're being persecuted uh for uh, former Muslims become Christian or just Muslims becoming nothing. And uh, they're being persecuted for it. Yeah, now we've talked about different bus ads. Um, about, the atheist uh, bus ads. Yep, atheist bus ads. Christian bus ads you, you see, um, and you know, keep Christ in Christmas and that kind of thing. Um, and so this is, a, no, this is not encouraging people to leave Islam. That's, that's the argument. It's saying, if you are, then, you know, Right. Um, but Pamela Geller, the, the active conservative activist behind the bus ads to the campaign, is not to offend Muslims, but to support those who have already made the decision on their own. It is not targeted at pract- practicing Muslims, said Geller. Uh, it does not say leave. It says leaving with a question mark. Right. So I thought it was interesting that in, um, in Detroit, they, um, well, it, first of all, in Miami, uh, they they have them on there, but it was temporary pulled uh, to reconsider if it's offensive to Islam. They were later reinstalled on the Miami buses. But in Detroit, where there's a large Muslim community, the ad is um, 
running into problems. Uh, they were, the Detroit Area Transportation Authority refused to allow the ads. Uh, Thomas More Law Center uh, filed a federal lawsuit against the Suburban Mobility Authority for Regional Transportation. They just have to have these really long names, don't they? Um, but uh, Smart. Suburban Mobility Authority for Regional Transportation. Uh, Smart. Okay. Yep. Didn't catch that. It broke the line, so I didn't see it. Um, ah. They said uh, the transportation agency violated the rights of free speech and equal protection clauses in the Constitution, and Detroit government officials grant atheists the right to express a view that God does not exist, not worrying about offending Christians. Um, yet at the same, the same politically correct officials censor speech that might offend Muslims. Right. Um, and uh, obviously, you know, I think they're going to win. Uh, hopefully the bus company would say, yep, you're right. We're not going to win this one. Um, <clears throat> and I, I you know, I, if you're offended, you're offended. Mm-hmm. I had a sign on the side of the ark. It said, leaving dry land? Tough. <laughs> I am haunted by waters. So who are the kids who are going to drown outside in, 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 the, in the flood? <laughs> it's actually supposed to rain quite a bit this week. <laughs> Are you going to have people, you know, on the side of the church, you know, banging on the side of the church, let us in, let us in, we're dying out here? <laughs> well, actually, the church is on pretty high ground, so I think we'll be okay. Yeah, well, yeah, we're only going to let eight. <laughs> okay. That, that, that's, that's our problem, you know, with our, with our enrollment. <laughs> we're only letting in eight. <laughs> So, uh, you know what? I wonder how this bus, the bus dad would go in, in over in Afghanistan. Mm. Yeah, probably not too well. Probably not too well. Now, as a, as a, as a parent of army people, I find this attitude extremely offensive. Uh, you know, considering, you know, my son was in Iraq and my daughter maybe could, may be going to Afghanistan this fall. Um, and um, the International Christian Concern, now I've never heard them, uh, has learned, it says, has learned that an Af- Afghan parliamentary secretary called for the public execution of Christians on the parliament floor. Uh, the Associated Press reported that Abdul Sater Kawasi, deputy secretary of the Afghan lower house in the parliament, called for the execution of Christian converts from Ad- Islam. Those, uh, speaking in regards to video broadcasts, Broadcasted by Afghan television network Norin TV, showing footage of Christian men being baptized, praying in Farsi. Kwasi said, those Afghans that appeared in this video film should be executed in public. The House should order the Attorney General and the NDS, which is the intelligence agency, to arrest these Afghans and ex- execute them. And the broadcast also triggered a protest by hundreds of Kabul University students who shouted death threats and demanded the expulsion of Christian foreigners accused of proselytizing. Well, you know what, guys? Maybe, just maybe, we should get rid of all the foreigners, including all the army people. I'll let you go back into the Taliban and see how you like it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no kidding. Man. <sighs> you know, I just... This is so alien to me. Just the the mentality that if that we're going to, you know, we're going to kill you for what you believe, you know, that, you know, because I mean, it doesn't really, it's not going to actually going to change most people's beliefs. It's just going to change what they admit. Uh, And that's exactly what it says too. this article goes on to say that, um, Many Christians are in hiding, fearful of execution. You know, and uh, they're, they're they're not saying what they believe. They're just, you know, keeping them in their mouth shut. I know what I must do. Um, but I'm afraid to do it. But if this is any idea of, of what Islam is all about, then why? I mean, come on. I mean, right? You know, you know. Is, that's why. You know, I, is there no? Go, I'm sorry. Go ahead. There's no hope there. No. No, it, look, if, if your religion is the truth, then you shouldn't be afraid of people 
um, telling things that you consider not to be true. And yes, right. some people will be, you know, will be, some people can be duped into, um, into things that are not true. Okay. But they're going to be duped into things regardless whether you make it legal or illegal. They're just going to be duped into something else, you know? And so he has gone unchallenged long enough. This is just really sad. I want to encourage, I, I think we are so insulated here in the United States and in many of the countries where people are watching this, there's people in China going, um, hello, um, that are watching this, but, uh, you know, for the most part, um, if, if you're watching this, chances are you live in, in a free nation that, uh, you don't have this kind of stuff going on. Right. And, um, and, and so I know that here in America, you know, you see this stuff and, and for one, it doesn't make the news very much. It's sort of like little sidebar things because people don't want to hear about it. They, I'm just going to rather be comfortable. And especially when you consider that, um, we, the United States is considers Afghanistan an ally. We've got our soldiers fighting for their freedom and, you know, and stuff like that. It's, this is a real slap in the face. Not, not because America is a Christian nation, but because we're fighting for freedom and here you're trying to take it away from your own people. Right. Uh, well, that's one of the problems is that uh, within a lot of Islam, Islam countries, there's very little freedom. I remember when, uh, you know, when the first Gulf War and, uh, you know, they had take, taken Kuwait, there, there's very little freedom in Kuwait, really. You know, I mean, they're ruled by, you know, this, this, this royal family and yada, yada, yada. Okay. The problem was, of course, A, it was that, you know, you had one big country taking over another country. And, you know, yes, there is it's the whole issue of the oil there. Okay. That all, that all makes sense. Um, but there's, you know, we had, I think we had a good reason for going in. But, you know, freedom was not necessarily one of them. Uh, these are some very unfree countries. Uh, you know, because Islam will not brook anything else. Um, you know, the idea of Western, Multiculturalism is very foreign. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, but, you know, some people, you know, complain about multiculturalism. I tend to think it's a rather good thing overall because of that. Uh, which brings us, of course, now to Comedy Central. Right. All right. So we talked a few weeks ago about the fact that they, um, the Comedy Central edited an episode was it one or two episodes um, of South Park cutting out uh, the Muslim jokes because they're afraid of offending Muslims because they got death threats. Um, and so now they decided, oh, well, we're going to, um, we've got a new show planned. Now, this has not been green-lighted yet, all right? That's important to understand. But the show is called The Jesus Christ Show. No, JC. Or I'm sorry, JC. Um, they say it's a playful take on religion and society with a sprinkle of dumb. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm um, sure that that's true. As um, Lisa de Morala, Morales Morales and it reported the Washington Post, it would be about Jesus moving to New York City to escape the enormous shadow of his powerful but apathetic father. Yeah. Okay. Right. And, you know, now this guy who's writing this is in a, in a U.S. news and opinion blog. He, he just like, I don't understand it. What's the big deal? You know, uh, um, well, actually, no, he says, no, he understands. He actually says, uh, the critics of the show point out rightly that a series including Buddha, Muhammad, or Vishnu would likely never make it out of the starting gate. Um, but yet somehow or another, uh, um, because of being bad taste and not funny, Yet somehow it's acceptable when we come to Jesus, whose divinity on some level is accepted by a majority of Americans. Mm -hmm. um, well, no, how about this, guys? You know, if you made this show about Muhammad, you know, you get killed. You know, it's just safe to make fun of Christians. It's just safe to make fun of Jesus. Mm -hmm. So we know you guys aren't going to go out on a rampage and kill people. You know, forget the next, I tell you, next time I hear somebody start talking about how, how, you know, the real, 
you know, how religious people want to want America to live in a theocracy. You know, I mean, go, 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 go to Afghanistan, see what a theocracy really looks like. Mm -hmm. You know, um, we just want to, you know, not have people insult us. Yeah. Gratuitous. Okay. Great. Yeah, it's all this gratuitously. I mean, yeah. Have, do we do stupid things? Sure. Religious people do stupid things. Should they be, you know, have them pointed out? Sure. They should. Um, have they, you know, should it, you know, even be made fun of sometimes? I tell you, well, I'll tell you, I've got, I could make a hundred jokes about Ted Haggard coming back to start a new church. That would not be a hard thing to do. Um, mm -hmm. and you know, we laugh at ourselves regularly I, on this show. Right, I'll tell you what, Comedy Central. Make the Ted Haggard show. <laughs> you know, you, I would not complain about that the least bit. Well, the, you know, the funny thing is, if you want to pick on Christians, too late. We already pick on ourselves, right? You know, Jim and I have mentioned several, you know, many times on this show, the um, the old magazine, The Wittenberg Door, or just The Door in its later years. Um, there's, a, there's a great blog called Stuff Christians Like. It's done by the um, a pastor's son who's a Christian, um, but he just kind of picks on all the goofy things that are popular in the Christian subculture and stuff, you know. And you know, there's plenty of that. You know, that we know that we do goofy, stupid things, right? And you know, we're kind of embarrassed about it, and um, but. You know, when when you have a any group that's big enough, you're gonna have goofy things going on, right? That's right. I mean, it's it's not hard to come up with you know all kinds of goofy stuff in the Christian, evangelical, even Catholic world. Uh, you know, and people would say, you know, bury a statue of Joseph in front of your house and it'll sell. You know, I mean, there's all sorts of goofy things you can point to, um, but this is not. Jesus loves me, this I'm sure. Jordan. Well, it's just you know, but, but Jake, I, I, I have to laugh. This guy, he says, um, you know, um, it's hard to imagine such a show could be done in a tasteful, respectful manner and be funny. But that in no way means they didn't have the right to go ahead with a program. Well, nobody's arguing they don't have the right to. You got mm -hmm. the perfect right to. But as we've said, just because you have the right to, does that mean you should? Right. You know, yeah, she, you know, you have the right to do all kinds of things. You know. Um, but, you know, uh, but that doesn't mean you should, um, you know, I guess you have a right to make a show making fun of Martin Luther King Jr. for that matter, or even, you know, but, uh, I don't think many people are going to, um, you know, it's not a good, it's not a good thing. Mm -hmm. I've got one thing to say to the people at Comedy Central. How long can you tread water? <laughs> That's from Bill Cosby. Thank yep. you very much. Uh, which I probably heard before you were born. But anyway, um, I, I, this Jim's guy, almost I don't, as old as I am. <laughs> I'm getting there. Um, I, I don't know this other guy. This he also it's not so much that the concept of, is offensive as it is that the complaints that are being raised about it have the ugly stink of victimization. That is so off-putting when raised by the likes of uh, likes of Reverend Al Sharpton, the folks at the Council on American Islamic Relations, the Mexican American Legal Defense Fund and Education Fund, and American United for Separation Church of State in the National Organization of Women. Uh, <laughs> well, it's not that. It's not victimization. It's you know. You won't make fun of Muslims. Don't make fun of Christians. Right. You know, we're all we're asking just simply for, you know, equal, equal respect. Mm -hmm. But the fact you won't make fun of Muhammad because, you know, you'll get killed. You'll make fun of Jesus because, you know, you can do it. And we won't say it. Christians won't say a whole lot. Right. You know, there was a I read a really great article on an atheist blog this week um, or no, last week. Anyway, um, it was talking about this whole like, is it OK for us as atheists to say things that offend Christians. And it was sort of like, should we, you know, do or the, the sort of the whole victimization thing? Um, are they, uh, 
should we not say things that are going to specifically irritate and annoy them, right? And and there's sort of two sides to that question. For one, there's the the freedom of speech thing. And well, yeah, you have the right to say things that are offensive. Okay. Um, the question is, you know, is it going to be beneficial? And, you know, and he didn't come right out and answer the question, but he, you know, he basically says, you, you're not going to, um, you know, you catch more flies with honey. Sort right. Of thing. Right. So I remember uh, something that was said to me once, and that is that you know certain things that you say, for instance, the gospel, when it comes to Christians, is going to offend people, right, just by the nature of its content. Um, but you don't have to be offensive in how you say it, right? And, and I think that's what it comes down to is if, all right, now granted this is Comedy Central, offending people is, you know, helps give ratings, okay? Um, but if you're going to offend people, offend everybody. You know, or at least don't be, don't say, okay, well, this particular group, we're going to stay away from. They're untouchable. But this other group, man, it's open season on them. All right. I don't have a problem, you know, but in, is it okay to pick on atheists? You know, uh, I don't see a lot of that as much as I hear. I, I saw, uh, it was like a t-shirt or something or a bumper sticker or something like that. Not too long ago that said, Hey, atheists, you're not being persecuted anymore. Quit your whining. <laughs> <laughs> and uh you know the and you can debate that one but um the you know what about that do you ever see atheists being picked on um on on comedy central or any other comedy i don't i i i cannot recall ever seeing that so i don't can't think of too many often either but anyway well, all of which I think goes to show that religion is very important in American life. Hmm? You know, uh, the fact that we're having this debate and um, and debates like it, I think it shows that. Which brings us to a, a, a blog from the Dallas Morning News. And uh, which this guy um, talks about the fact that uh, religion is very important in America, but it's not so important in um Europe, and uh, it's asking, you know, uh, uh, does religion really matter? And uh, this uh, guy, um, Kevin Ekstrom, editor of Religious News Service, says, um, uh, if you want to understand America, you have to understand religion. You can't understand where we have been, where we are, or where we're going without understanding the religious currents that course to American life. Um. Uh, I think it was Alexis de Tocqueville once said that America had the, you know, the mind of a Protestant congregation. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, he was very, and this was, he, he visited, of course, in the 1800s. He was very impressed at the, you know, the religious life in America. Um, and we, you know, I think there had, religion is very strong in America, especially when you compare it to Europe, where religion is almost dead. Yeah. Yeah, the um, no, there was a it, th this article I thought was really interesting in light of uh, another completely unrelated article in Psychology Today. Um, I actually blogged about it. If you uh, go to uh, shepherdoftheridge dot org um, and find my blog on there, I, I talked about because it said that um, according to studies, atheism is growing in uh, in affluent countries. And in like third world countries, there's basically no atheism. And, and he argued that, um, in, in those countries, people have no hope. And so they cling to God because they've got nothing else. And, um, whereas in affluent countries, people are, can relax a bit more and, and stop and think and, um, and, and don't really need God. And to which I said, Oh, theology of the cross. <laughs> and, uh, but, it was it was really interesting to, that he was saying that you know eventually atheism is going to take over and and there will be no more religion, and uh, and you know here in this article he's basically pointing out that you know um, that's really not a good thing if you know even if that is the case, which I 
don't believe it is, but, um, you know, he says, uh, well, this is, he, he talked to, uh, Kevin, uh, Ekstrom, the editor of the Religion News Service. And, um, he said, religion in all its forms can be a force for great good or great evil. And America has been fortunate that we have mostly seen religion used for great good. There's a religious impulse that is deeply woven into our American DNA. It founded our hospitals, founded our schools, and it provides the contours of, of our common American identity. You know, and and that's true. You, you look at the um, you know our hospitals. You look at at our the schools. First, it was the churches that were sponsoring these, and it wasn't until later that the public ones came about. Mm-hmm. Um, you look at whenever there's a disaster, it's um, especially the Christians, but you know, re- religious people in general that are the first ones there for relief. Now, um, people like Richard Dawkins are are working on. Uh, developing ethical society um, organizations that will help, that will go and help uh, in in these sort of disaster things and stuff like that that will organize in that. Um, and, and basically what it is, is it was a response to the Christians saying, oh, you know, the Christians, they say that, um, that atheists don't help out. Well, we'll show them. Like, oh, okay, great, I'm glad that you're doing that, you know, these people need all the help they can get, and I'm not going to, you know, if you're not against us, you're for us at that point. But at the same time, it's, well, about time, <laughs> you know. And uh, so, you know, you look at the history of, you, you look at our schools, not only the um, the public schools, but you look at our, um, you know, all the old Ivy League schools in our country. They're all founded by churches. Yep. That they were. Um, yeah, I remember one time somebody said, uh, there's a talk about evangelical Christians being anti-religious. No, anti-education. And um, this is back in and I, and I would just respond to my own paper. I said, yeah, I wrote a letter to the editor. I said, yes, um, God knows that, you know, evangelical Christians have had nothing to do with schools such as Harvard, Yale. Princeton. Yeah. Um, you know. Um, this goes on. Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, uh, Southern Methodist University. Um, you know, I mean, you can just, you know, uh, you, you can just, the, the, you know, even today, um, Gordon-Conwell, Wheaton College. Um, there are, you know, uh, Oral Roberts, I mean, if you want to go even far right, Oral Roberts and Bob Jones University. I mean, they, it's... There's a world of, of schools out there that that ha- that are Christian in their background, mm-hmm. and, or you know, in their origin, um, and uh, you know, it's I, I you know I just um, my question is, of course, with Richard Dawkins and those guys is um, so if it's an ethical society. How do you know what's ethical? Mm-hmm. Who says what's ethical? The only thing that they have to say what's ethical is what society happens to say right now is ethical. Right. Right, which fluctuates and varies. Which fluctuates, so, right. Which, you know, shows that, well, and, you know, and, and then you get into the whole question of is there absolute truth or not, and and we would contend that the Bible is absolute truth, and they would disagree with that. Um, but, you know, it's worked pretty well for us for uh, quite a few years. And um, so, uh, you know, there's, and there's, uh I've heard lots of different approaches to sort of answering that question without religion. Um, you know, things like, was it Immanuel Kant with the social contract, uh, mm-hmm. which is basically just the golden rule. You be nice to me. I'll be nice to you. Um, but even that kind of falls apart when you run into questions of, uh, you know, uh, questions of, of, for instance, abortion. Right. Um, well, Okay, so be. Uh, well, how do we treat the unborn? You know, um, questions of uh, the handicapped, uh, especially people that are not able to, uh, the, with, the, with very profound uh, mental handicaps or communication handicaps that, um, th- that where people can say, well, I'm never going to be in that situation. And you can kind of say, well, what if you were? 
but well, you don't really know until you're there. And um, and so often our society puts value on people based on what can this person contribute to society instead of uh, what can or, or how can we show love to this person. It's a very different way of looking at people. This is true love. So, and it really devalues human beings. Humans don't deserve to live. They deserve to choose for themselves. So, it's an interesting thing. Um, yeah, let's move on then to our last one. Well, we always have seem to have the wacky story of the day to end things with. <laughs> And I didn't even listen to this guy's sermon. Did you take the time to listen to him? I, this this clip that was in the this particular story in the sporting news. Um, yeah, I, I listened to to this one clip because I had a, I thought, well, maybe someone's just you know getting this out of context or or something like that. But no, no, that's this is really what he said. <laughs> oh, okay, go ahead. All right. So this is Reverend Christopher Bennick of Hilton Head, South Carolina. Gave a um, gave a sermon, in which he suggests that LeBron James, um, who is with the our Cleveland Cavaliers, um, who's he's been debating for those who are not basketball fans, um, or don't live in Cleveland where we're bombarded with it every time we turn on the TV. Um, LeBron James, a very big name in basketball, one of the biggest, uh, is debating about where he's going to be next year, what team he's going to be with, and everybody wants him because he's a really good player. And so um, this uh, King James, as, as his, his nickname, um, it should, according to Pastor Bennick, uh, accept his higher calling as a servant of Christ and play for $1 per season for three years. And see... If he does this, then um, he says, all right, if LeBron plays for a single dollar and Shaquille O'Neal does not re-sign with the team, the Cavs will have enough space for two max contract players, uh, which is not true, but forget about the salary cap. Um, then the Cavs can sign two of James' multi-talented friends, win many championships for the city of Cleveland, and inspire citizens to do amazing things. <laughs> And, um, you know, so the idea is that oh, people are going to be so inspired by his action that, and, and the success that comes from that, that it's just going to lead to all kinds of amazing, wonderful things happening in Cleveland. And then people see what's happening in Cleveland and it's just going to spread all over the country. And, you know, and Cleveland's a good place to start because Forbes magazine um, declared it the most miserable place to live <laughs> in the country. Well, we've been doing, they call it the armpit of the country. I mean, you know, they have for some years. It's so, the reason people are moving to North Ridgeville from uh, Cleveland. <laughs> Cleveland. Okay. So, okay. I mean, now, maybe I'm not the brightest bulb on the tree. What does this have to do with the cross? <laughs> and Jesus. What planet is this guy on? From? Well, well, you know, I got to think about this. And, you know, and he mentions, he says, uh, you know, his logic is without error. Everyone knows the success of Boston sports teams has turned that fair city into a hotbed of charitable contributions and neighborly love. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, don't, that. you don't get more generous or, or more friendly than Boston, I tell you. <laughs> well, but I'm thinking, all right, let's see. Uh, someone who is very successful that could lead, um, they could lead someone to to just tremendous success, and um, and and works for only a dollar a year. Hmm. Um, Steve Jobs. And yeah, look at look at um, Cupertino. Look at the Silicon Valley. Look how how tremendously. Yeah, I mean. You know, Apple's done well. Now they're considered a. Um, a la I just heard this, and I didn't see the numbers, but that Apple is now a bigger company than Microsoft somehow, um, because of the success of the iPhone and iPods and things like that. Um, but uh, and, and I, I don't remember how those numbers work. But you know, Steve Jobs works for a dollar a year. Well, for Apple anyway. He works for Pixar, and that's where he makes his real money. But um. I thought it was on stock options. 
Well, oh, he got rid of most of his stock options from wow. Apple. Um, they bought him a private jet a couple years ago, but um, so much for being green. But he, um, <clears throat> you know, if you look at the Silicon Valley, you don't see a lot of you know neighborly love there. No, <laughs> it's cutthroat. You know, so, but yeah, I mean, the not only is this a ridiculous idea that would never work. Um. I'm just I'm thinking about the people in his congregation that are going. Um, enough about King James. How about King Jesus? You know what? What are you talking about, man? <laughs> now, and the thing is, if he was going to do something like this, and and sort of um, like okay, let me let me give this in sort of like a parable, and then. And then, like, pull in the cross, and and I have no idea how he would do that. <laughs> but you know, I I had shark spewing zombies in my sermon this morning, so you know, you just <laughs> you never know um, how you could use something as an illustration. I was talking about things that people are afraid of, um, but uh, the uh, you know to to spend a good chunk of your um, and this clip was, what, five minutes or something like that, um, to spend that much time on this sort of just bizarre idea that where, oh, you know, LeBron James is going to turn the, the world around. See, I think that if you're looking for someone to make a, a real difference in this world, it's Jesus and us through him or him through wait, him through us. Sorry. <laughs> Have you found Jesus yet? No. So I, you know, I could see encouraging your own people because of, um, you know, Jesus' act of charity, not working for a dollar, but rather coming and um, and working and and being <laughs> punished and and whipped and beaten and rejected by God and all that kind of thing. Um, you know, he didn't. And, and for that matter, look how that worked out. <laughs> I don't know. I just got a... I don't know. Those are the weirdest things I'd ever saw or read. And I just like, you know, pastors should just stick to the gospel. Yep. Preach the gospel. Yep. You know, just today we had a baptism. <laughs> um, and uh, we had um, a lot of non-churched people there this morning. Um, and, uh, I've had a ton of them actually. And, uh, so I just, you know, I wanted, you know, I said, I know there's going to be a lot of church people there, you know, coming just for this baptism. I want to preach the gospel clearly and simply. Hmm. And, um, uh, I did just, 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 just set it up there. And, uh, we actually have a, a guy who's visiting our church. Uh, he's a Baptist pastor and, uh, he's been coming quite regularly. He, he, he guest worships with us. And he, he told me, he said, this was really, this was very good. You really, you know, knew who was going to be here. He says, you preach the gospel beautifully. Um, and he says, you did it, you know, he says, you just couldn't ask to be any clearer. He says, you know, he says, I don't know if you hit it, if you changed any of their hearts, but he says, but I don't know any, but I couldn't have heard a better message to do it. I don't think that they would have said that if you know, preaching about LeBron James playing for a dollar a year. Mm -hmm. A planet. Who cares? Well, People are dying going to hell. Hey, our buddy at Atheist Nexus gave us a uh, note. Why don't you share our, our note from Richard here, which I thought was really pretty cool. Remember Atheist Nexus? A couple weeks ago we talked about this group uh, because they had the Catholic school teacher had been fired. And um, because she signed on it and Dale had said being, that he was part of an atheist group. And uh, anyhow, somebody uh, sent the, the head of atheist Nexus a, um, a, a notice about us. And so he uh, wrote to us. Wait, do you have it? I, I don't have it in front of me all of a sudden. Oh, yes, I do. His name is Richard Haynes. He's the executive director of atheist Nexus. Hey, guys, my name is Richard Haynes, a.k.a. Brother Richard. I am the president and executive director director of Atheist Nexus. I also blog at lifewithoutfaith.com and I'm a co-host of AtheistNews.org podcast. 
I was forwarded your email, your show from a friend because she talked about our site. I should be clear that Atheist Nexus is exclusively for non-theists. You do have to declare yourself as one to join. We do this because we want Nexus to be a supportive community, not a place to debate. There are plenty of sites where people can debate. Anyway, a good show. Yeah. Uh, anyway, good show. If you ever have guests, I would love to participate. I'm a former fundamentalist minister and love to have friendly, respectful discussions about non-theism and all things religious. Take care, Richard Haynes. Uh, Richard, I'll tell you what, we're debating. We just might have you on sometime to, to do a discussion. It might be a lot of fun. Uh, if we can come up with an advance of some topics to sit and talk about and, and how to approach them, uh, in a way that would be indeed friendly and religious, uh, friendly and respectful. I think that could be a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Um, and very interesting and stuff. But I'd love to hear your story about being a, a former fundamentalist, uh, and then becoming, uh, a non-theist. Um, so uh, I would really appreciate it, really would enjoy that. Um, I do know that the weekend after, um, I don't know when we'll do it, but we'll do it. Yep. Yeah, that'll be good. And I'd really enjoy that. Um, and and I also want to thank you uh, for clarifying, uh, because we were wondering about um, whether you had to be an atheist or not to be a part of that uh, website, because this... Uh, this teacher was specifically being singled out for joining that uh, website. And, and so we were wondering about that. So I really appreciate uh, filling us in on that one. So um love to hear that. And we'd love to hear from any of you. Um, you can do like he did and, and send us a note on either leave a comment or send us a note on uh, YouTube or any of the other uh, file sharing sites or uh, video sharing sites, um, or if you're, uh, you can send us an email at podcast at crossfeednews.com. Um, you can go to our Facebook page. If you just uh, do a search on Facebook on Crossfeed, uh, it should come up pretty quick for you there. And uh, you can, uh, or it's not become a fan anymore, you can like it and get updates when we have uh, more information, new episodes, all that kind of stuff. And you can use that to send us a note or um, or uh, start a discussion or, or whatever there, too. So um, love to, to hear from people um, and always happy to uh, have people of, you know, Jim and I are both Missouri Synod Lutheran pastors, but I know a lot of our viewers are not, and or I mean, are not Missouri Synod Lutherans or even Lutherans or even Christians. And so, um, you know, we just love to, to hear from you no matter what your background is. So, and, and especially if you disagree with us, um, you know, let us know that too. Ah, a chain letter. Ah, I touched it. I touched it. Ah! Take care. Have a wonderful week. God bless you in all things. Yep. Good end, everybody. God bless. Goodbye, whippersnappers. Goodbye, Noah. <laughs>